everyone, and welcome to an exciting episode of Biologic Science News. Today, I want to talk about the results of a very large study, which has to do with our modern agriculture and the collapse of bee colonies. This issue is very important because bees play an irreplaceably important role in our ecosystems, and this study has identified the causal factor in their collapse. If you listen to the news regularly throughout the early and mid-2000s, you probably remember hearing a lot about beehives and how they would suffer from a thing called colony collapse disorder, about mass bee deaths that threatened various agricultural products and other things that are dependent on the bees for pollination. This was, and still is, a very serious problem, and for a long time, we only had speculation as to the cause. Some people feared some kind of ingrained genetic tripwire that had been crossed, and others claimed it was an industrial pollutant. The actual cause of the bee collapse has been identified by two studies coming out of Europe and Canada, respectively, both involving the efforts of multiple universities and organizations, and both published in the journal Science. The first study examined 33 large farm plots that were scattered throughout Germany, Hungary, and the United Kingdom. These farm plots had crops that were treated with insecticides, and these chemicals were shown to have adverse effects on the non-parasitic and non-crop-eating insects in the farmland. This is pretty unsurprising, you know, that insecticides hurt insects, you know, big surprise, but the study demonstrated that honeybees and wild bees are both specifically hurt by these chemicals, which are called neonicotinoids. The neonicotinoids are sprayed on a crop in the winter, coating the seeds in the insecticide. When winter nears an end and the bees come out to eat the seeds, they ingest the neonicotinoids, and this exposure damages their reproductive capacity. The study found that honeybee populations, they struggled to reproduce effectively after exposure to these insecticides. In the following spring, the bee colonies struggled to produce offspring. The size of the colonies shrank as the older bees died, but there were fewer and fewer younger bees to replace them. The second study was conducted in Canada, and it corroborated some of the results that were found in the United Kingdom. The Canadian study found that the insecticide-covered crop food itself wasn't the main source of bee exposure. Instead, bees got most of their neonicotinoid exposure from wild flowers, and these flowers were themselves exposed to the neonicotinoid residue. You see, when the insecticide is sprayed on a crop, A non-trivial portion of the chemical disperses into the air and covers the soil. The chemical residues carried on the wind inevitably land on other objects nearby, which usually means the nearby vegetation that's immediately surrounding the farmland. All of these trees and wildflowers and grasses, they get coated in these insecticide chemicals. But this isn't the primary source of exposure either, so what is? Well, besides the airborne neonicotinoids, we also have those that landed on the soil. Now, when the crop gets watered, or when it rains, these water-soluble chemicals get washed out. They get carried in the flow of rainwater off of the farm plot and into the soil where wild plants are growing. As the roots of these wild trees and flowering plants soak up this neonicotinoid-rich water, They soak up the neonicotinoids because it's water-soluble, so it stays in the water as the water goes through the roots, through the plant's tissue, and out to its leaves and flowers. As the plant grows and feeds its tissues, like the flowers and the pollen within the flowers, the neonicotinoid chemical gets spread throughout the plant's body, and this also gets into its pollen. This contaminated pollen was identified as the primary source of exposure for bees, as this pollen is literally shaped by evolution to coat the bee's body in a, in, a, in a thick layer. The general idea behind this evolutionary principle is that the bee flies from flower to flower, gathering nectar and the nutrients and stuff that it needs to bring back to its hive. But as it does this, uh, the pollen from one flower kind of sticks to it, sticks to the little hairs on the bee's body. And as the bee flies from flower to flower, the general idea is that this pollen gets rubbed or shaken off into another plant's flower. This is basically a plant reproductive strategy, and it uses bees as a transport vehicle for the gametes, for the pollen. But because the neonicotinoids were flushed into the soil and soaked into the plants and their pollen, the bees are basically coating themselves in a poisonous chemical. 
to compound this problem, the additional exposure to an agricultural fungicide called boscolid nearly doubles the lethality and damage caused by the neonicotinoids. And what's really scary is that the quantities of boscolid measured in the experiment and in the study are quantities that are usually present when farmers are spraying their crops. They didn't use a particularly heavy amount of boscolid in the experiment. They used what farmers would normally use. And so this represents all of the farmland that uses neonicotinoids and boscolid in just a regular normal quantity. This shows that the regular normal quantities of these farming chemicals, of these, these agricultural tools, they actually cause really serious downstream effects. They really, really disrupt the local ecology in a negative way. These two studies provide solid proof that specific insecticides and their combinatory use with other chemicals like certain fungicides have a disastrous effect on bee populations. This had been speculated to be a potential cause for colony collapse disorder for many years, but until now, there had been relatively few studies exploring the connection between insecticides and mass bee death. As a result of the studies, lawmakers in Europe and Canada are proposing entire bans on the neonicotinoids, and for greater study into the adverse effects of agricultural chemicals on the environment. One can hope that politicians in America will also get their act together and start looking into this issue scientifically. These studies and others of their kind are really important for our understanding and preservation of the world around us. It's really important that we sustain our ecology and protect the wildlife that shares this world with us. The bees have been an integral part of the world's ecology for millions of years. They fit nicely into an extremely fundamental ecological niche. We cannot afford to seriously damage the bee populations because this will directly degrade the environment and risk the extinction of numerous species, including a lot of crop species that we depend on for food. It's important that our public policy and our agricultural practices are mindful of the ecology, of sustainable practices, such that we can preserve this one world we have for future generations.